Hey everyone, so uh, just uh, morning time, just tending to all my jobs, feeding the chickens and whatever else. Uh, so just ready to get started on making the guarding of the sawmill. I've got, um, you know, the whole front is guarded, the two shafts at the back need guarding, and I've got just loads of other little jobs as well to do. Uh, the water system, ramps, winch, um, more painting to do. Um, uh, electric start, battery, wiring, uh, yeah, long list of stuff. I'm going to try and get it all done in this video. And after this video, I think we're going to be in a position ready to cut. So yeah, just drink my coffee, get myself prepared to start what is quite a complex thing to make, quite a complex shape. Yeah, I think we'll be able to do it though. All right, let's, uh, let's get to work. Hey everyone, so as you can see, we're making the guards at last. Uh, I didn't feel much at the start because I didn't really know what I was going to do, but I've got a plan now. We've got a shape, I'm going to start boxing it in. Um, ideally, this would have been bent, but I don't have a bender, so um, we're going to just box it in, you know, piece by piece, bit by bit, weld it all with a TIG welder, and uh, grind it up and shape it up. Right, so I've uh, managed to get the guard done. This is the shape, it's only tacked, um, but I've put it on and off a few times. It's been a bit of a battle to be honest. <laughs> I haven't got a lot of filming of it. But um, yeah, running low on TIG gas, so I'm gonna just weld now until I run out of gas. Keeping it from all buckling is gonna be difficult, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna just weld to opposite ends, move around as much as I can. But yeah, it's just weld now until I uh, run out of gas. Pretty awkward because I've really got enough room in the shed. Well, we got a hundred amps using a Kind of a lay wire technique. I could really use a foot pedal towards the ends, but never mind. Bit. 
Right, we're going to have to stop there unfortunately because uh, I thought I'd run out of gas but I'm going to run out of power before I run out of gas so we've got plenty of power but uh, if I carry on with this we won't have any for tonight um, so yeah, carry on welding tomorrow Alright, it's the uh, next day still welding <laughs> a lot of welding to do gas is still going with a bit of hydroelectric build up overnight so we'll get a uh, Another hour or so out of it. Probably my gas is still working to be honest. Right down at the bottom of the uh, of what's left. But yeah, let's get a bit of this welded up. Running it hot and fast. We've got so much to do. the way around I've only got these little bits here I think I might just do it in time to not run out of gas yeah I'm really pleased that it's coming out almost looks sort of half professional yeah if I could be bothered to spend the time all grinding it flat and everything you know I could probably get it perfectly smooth but I'm happy to show the worlds the worlds come out quite well really so happy to show them you get paint yeah let's get this done we're going to do a test fit. Looks good. So it's going to clear everything. So in this clip, my uh, old arch nemesis, the wind, came out pretty strong. So I'll just do a voiceover for you. I'm just about to cut out the doors following the shape of the casing. And I, originally I was going to have a uh, weld a lip on to the doors that then uh, wrapped around the casing. But my concern is that uh, when I weld that, it, the door just won't stay flat enough and it won't close properly. Because when you weld things, they grow and they change shape. Even it doesn't matter how careful you are, they get they just change shape on you. And I don't think it would work for a, for a um, for a door. So I've got these aluminium profiles that I've had laying around for years, and I'm going to use those bolted to the door as a lip to lip round the outer casing. And I think that'll work and I'll get to use something that I've had sitting around in the shed for well since I moved here. So let's give that a go. Right, so there it is. So these doors are gonna hinge open. Yeah, like that, so we can get to everything. Um, but my fear is because this has probably moved when I welded it, as soon as I mount this back solid to the frame these doors won't be necessarily where they are at the moment so I think I need to mount it and then work back from there with hinges and trims and everything yeah so let's get it mounted right got the thing mounted on some angle iron brackets it's doing some more so as you can see it's a bit flimsy started figuring out I'm going to do these hinges get hinges and doors set, clamped up, trim it all to size exactly and then put some of that aluminium over the edges I think that's going to work out Right, well that's it for today I've got the uh, two doors hung um, I've ordered some uh, rubber edging to go along here so this has got something to close up against so it's not rattly and uh, show you around the back how I've mounted it. And basically I've just used lots of uh, little angle iron brackets you know some quite big to you know make it really sturdy uh, some small ones along here it's mounted in about 12 places so it's it really on there strong even though it's only two mil sheet so yeah pleased with that the uh, next day so I got up early this morning and I knocked this together this is going to be the way of manually raising the logs onto the deck um, you take out the stop and put this in its place, adjustable height, um, and then I made two ramps. In there. Hope they'll be man enough, we'll soon find out though. I made these two ramps, they hook on the track, but they don't touch the part that the wheel runs on, they just sit on the edges. Can you see that? Yeah. 
And then I welded a bit of rebar on there for extra grip because the bark of the tree should sort of crush into that and it should grip it. So yeah, ramps and winch, that's how we shall load the logs on. And just uh, waiting for some rubber trim to come that's, uh, that goes around the edge of here. And then uh, I'll be able to finish this up, put all these uh, angles around and get all that done. But I need that rubber trim so I can set all the, all the gaps. Um, but yeah, we're getting there slowly. But putting so much, so many hours on this, I'm so close now, I just really want to use the thing. You know, getting a bit demoralising, there's just so many little jobs to do. It's never ending really. I feel like I just want to just use it. <laughs> but I know if I don't do them now, they won't get done. So yeah, we'll get it done. It's a lovely sunny evening. They got this uh, trim fitted, as you saw. Now I'm just uh, starting to fit these other pieces. That's not the right piece. That's the right piece. Just checking it's going to touch everywhere that I want it to. There it is. Get this lined up. So that needs to go there. That fixed on. Just keep working the way around, do not. So we're slowly but surely working our way around, it's starting to run out of light a little bit. Probably got another half hour left. So, a decent light. Just uh, cut these and got them drilled. Let's get them on. Hey yeah, everyone, so I was up since uh, 6.30 working on this. We've got all this done, trim's done. And I've added some uh, some latches as well. So it all opens up. Little lay over that. Hold that one together. Probably get some stronger latches at some point. Just had those from another project and they're doing alright at the moment. Not too rattly. So it could be another one down there. Like I say I'll get some bigger ones I think. Yeah, done a few other jobs as well. I've uh, mounted my key start. So this is my electric start. Got that mounted there. And I've also mounted this throttle. Um, I've had to put it there. Ideally I wanted it somewhere else, a bit closer to me. But um, I got this off an old garden tractor I had. And uh, it's just the length that it is. That's the best I could get it to. All right, next decision is where to mount the battery. Um, I was gonna mount it on here. Um, because this obviously has got to go up and down, so if I don't mount it on the carriage or on the moving up and down part then obviously I've got cables need to be slack to allow for up and down motion. However, I'd like to not mount it on that, I'd like to mount it back in case I run anything electric in the future, maybe electric winch or power feed. Because then I'd have the opposite problem of where I'd need power back to this part of the carriage without it moving up and down. Um, but then there's also the thing of if I mount it on here, it's just more weight that I've got to lift every time, you know. So, you yeah, know, if I mount it back there, I'm not lifting it all the time. So I think I'm going to mount it back here. It brings a bit of weight back as well where I'd like it. Um, and then I'm going to have to figure out a way of making the cable go up and down and reach with like a little springy system or something. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Mount it back here, this side, back here. Right, let's make some sort of box. Wow. 
one get in there. There we go. Nice tight fit. Well, now I can attach a little bit of a box around this when I've got more time. She is coming along. She rolls nice. Oh man, what to do next? Right, run some wires for this. Yeah, right, starting on the wiring now. <laughs> it's just one of the long list of things that's left to do. So we've got to do wiring, I need to do the water system, I need to do painting. Uh, what else? I've got a list somewhere, but yeah, there's a lot to do still. Right, so I've got the uh, water system hooked up. So I've got a water tank, I've plugged that with a bit of wood, some old pipe uh, fittings that I had off my old jet engine, still using bits off it. Goes down to here where we have a little uh, um, needle valve. So yeah, it goes then down to here, little needle valve, and then you can run that. You can dribble water onto the blade. Go water system. So yeah, and then just dribbles onto the blade at whatever flow rate I want, based on this needle valve. And I've put in a little bit of metal so I can sort of bend that pipe where I want it, and it should stay there. There we go. Always. What's the max flow? Oh, plenty. That's good, and we can go right down to just a, just a trickle. That's good, sorted. Right, next job is, I need to get the exhaust from blowing in my face, because the design of the engine blows right down where I'm going to stand. So uh, I've got these fittings that I ordered when I was doing the hydro. I've had them sitting around for a couple of years, to be honest. And uh, between them, they make a, a nice sweeping 90. So that should direct the exhaust out my face. So I'm just going to tig them together, try and weld that to the original exhaust. Perfect. How about that then? <laughs> Got a two inch exhaust on the sawmill. Be going really fast now. <laughs> Boy racer. Let's start it up, see if it see if it leaks and whatever. Uh, so we put that down there like that. And we just start her up, I think. That needs to. Uh yeah. Hey big girl, we've got a busy day today girl, can you help me out? We've got to make the guards because we've got to keep the YouTube commenters happy because otherwise they'll have a me. Yeah. Just added brackets for travelling, paint's almost dry so I'm going to put it back together now and then probably try and uh, pull this out of here, get it closer to the shed, because I don't need it to be flat or level now for all these other little jobs. It's me walking up the hill. Right, we are on the home straight here, everyone. It's going to actually have this done here shortly. How exciting is that? 
get everything back together. Got the trim back on, painted, worst paint job in history. But I'm not bothered, because the second we run it, it's going to be dust and stuff everywhere. Let's get the wheels back on. Right, let's get this belt on, or belts. So many people have commented about this belt being slack and it's going to come off and whatever else. It doesn't do anything, it's just literally just a bit of rubber for the band to sit on. And it flaps about over here, but the band is touching it on at least half of the, of the circumference of the wheel, so it can't come off. It just flaps about a bit. Yeah, and then this is the one that matters really. Does acts as the drive and uh, and the um, and the rubber for the band to sit on. God, I hope this works. It's better fit. Good. Band on. This is not going to want to come out of here without a fight because the back, because it's so long, it's seven meters long, so the back is going to want to ground out as I go up this hill. Too bad getting out. It was about what I predicted would happen. Ground out of the back. Be difficult to get around the corner. 
It wasn't too bad. A few little scuffs on the concrete, but that's what concrete's for. Well, uh, I think that is going to conclude this video. I reckon. Successful. This is ready to cut wood. It will cut wood now. I mean, I think I might get teething problems, but it should actually cut some timber. So that will be the next video. The sawmill. Cutting some timber, hoping the blade stays on and the belts stay on and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure we'll get some problem, but she works. And if I can pull it up that hill, pull it up anything.